So I'm gonna give you a garden tour. For those of you who are new to the channel, I'm in a Canadian Zone 3, which is approximately a USDA Zone 4. My last frost date technically isn't until June 10th, so it's just hitting this weekend, but I, I am fully planted. I very rarely wait all the way to the June 10th date unless if it's particularly cold in the evenings and then I will hold off on just transplanting things like tomatoes and peppers but everything else I will transplant or seed start no problem I have no problem there so when it comes to seed starting I am starting things like my lettuces and that's because I wave plant these meaning I start so many and then I start so many and I start so many I do it every two weeks throughout the entire season so those are a given um, otherwise I am starting some fall crops now for you and in warmer climates you can start these fall crops now for you in colder climates you can start the crops now as well just keep in mind you want some form of coverage so that's going to be like a low tunnel or um, some form of way in which you can insulate and protect those plants from really truly hard frost so definitely something to keep in mind there so inside of this i am doing really exotic kind of pumpkins so i'm doing like the warty ones the really flat ones that sort of thing so that's what's on either side of this and then the in, in the center I, I have some shorter term plants so i have lettuce kale and then i have some herbs here because eventually this will completely shade over and then i actually won't have any um, sun coming through because these tomatoes are just going to snuff them out or these sorry these pumpkins are going to totally snuff it out so this area here is just seed start um where i'm going to harvest a little bit earlier inside of here this is a section that doesn't get a lot of sun because of that there so this section here I have my kale I do have some lettuce and then I have oregano um, some cosmos they're not going to do particularly well in this section but that's what's here because of that low light I also have a zucchini on the corner here now zucchini grown in low light scenarios tend to not flower as much and therefore you don't get as much fruit off of them but they still work like they'll still do just fine and then I have like two random um, collard greens and then I have radishes there radishes are another one that actually do okay in lower intensity sunlight my husband is operating on his boat so it's kind of shading a lot of my garden at the moment but I'll try to give you as much of a tour over here as I can um, I have my herbs so I have spearmint oregano basil I have tower basil which by the way I'll do a close-up on it it's so unique so cool um, and then I have pepper plants in self-watering buckets I'm going to try that this year peppers do really well when they have a continual water source um, they also do well in stressful lower water conditions but I find I want to try just a constant water source what it does to my pepper plants um, those are jalapeno peppers in particular so yeah I have my thyme my spearmint and then this is the tower basil I just think that's so unique so pretty um, I'm I'm not too sure what the flowering on that's gonna look like because basil can honestly flower uh, quite easily which can be a problem in here I have sage more thyme celery and then these are my pepper plants I was talking about and then I have oregano regular old basil and I have some um, flowers in there to just kind of help with my tomato uh, pop of pollination. Now tomatoes, now tomatoes are a closed flower and I've done a video on this before, but the closed flower essentially means that it's not um, an open flower. So it's not open pollinated. It's just the buzzing of the bee on the actual flower itself that causes the pollination and then it, it self pollinates for the most part. Um, so with that in mind, I'm not doing it to you know increase pollination or cross pollination it's actually just to get buzzing in the area wind will help with uh, tomato pollination all that sort of stuff and that's really specific to just the self-pollinating type of plants where it's a closed flower so i actually do have some tomato um, flowers already started these are ones i started in march from inside my home all different kinds uh, some seeds I actually got from Jessica from Marcopia. I'm excited to see those, but that's an example of a closed flower. See how all the sex parts, I guess you could say, the fe female, male, 
all the pollen is all contained with inside of this. So that's kind of key there. And once we start flowering, you really want to make sure you keep really even watering practices to prevent those flowers from dropping in this really high heat that we're getting, as well as preventing blossom end rot, which will happen. So to keep those flowers in place, you do want to make sure you're giving really constant water. And that goes all the way <laughs> into back there. So yeah, I'd show you a little bit closer, but it looks the same throughout. This here, this is gonna be a new garden bed. I've got just a random pot of herbs back there. And then this here is just tomatoes, um, a couple herbs, and then that's about it. I've got a couple flowers in there. And then I have cucumbers in the back. We'll see how it goes. If they do well, I'm actually gonna trellis them upwards. But this is just a really, it's another sun position for me. Now the reason why sun is so important to me actually is because I don't have much sun here because of all my trees. So when I can get sun, I use it. And one really good example of this is actually what I'm about to show you. So this section here is really awkward. It was full of weeds, really heavy clay, but I've utilized it. So I grow tomatoes in here last year. This year I'm doing just regular string beans. And then after the string beans, I am doing onions. Now this very clearly needs to be weeded, um, but my onions are doing really well. And I actually planted these out way before my last frost date. These were out already in April. And then I just did a low tunnel to prevent against them freezing too, too bad. But this is crazy. So I look like I don't clean my yard. That is literally from the weekend. It's Wednesday or Tuesday right now. And I have all these seeds and it's, I just vacuumed this up on the weekend. That's from the trees. It's just all tree seeds. So if you've been following the channel long enough, you know the front bed I'm about to show you has been like mostly embarrassing for its entire life. And it's just finally starting to pick up. So I'm going to show you before and after. Like I said, if you've been following this channel for a while, you're about to be shocked by how much this bed has improved. So this is the bed that I could literally grow nothing in because it was always so hot. So I do have some garlic in the front here. And then I have a ton of perennial plants kind of just scattered all in this area. It ranges from peonies to salvia. Um, there are some lilies in the back there that have not yet bloomed. It looks just really green right now. But once it starts flowering, it's going to be absolutely gorgeous. I have sedum, which always does well. I have apparently a giant dandelion that I need to take care of. I had tulips, so I have tulips here, and I have tulips along the back as well. With my perennial tulips, I do leave them in the ground. I don't cut them back. Just leave them in place, let them do their thing. Um, and then once they die back, I have other plants that will come in. So I have yarrow there, and then I have some more allium-type lilies here. And yeah, so that's what that's gonna look like. And then I have three more perennials that I actually wanna plant as well. So up here on my front porch, I have turmeric. Yes, turmeric. And I also have ginger. I started these from store-bought. This is a self-watering container. So we're gonna try that out. And this one also is a self-watering. So the ginger is also interplanted with some herbs along with some zinnias, mostly seed started. So it hasn't come up yet, but this side will be full and this side will be full once it is completed um, and thriving. So this obviously is just temporary. Um, it's already starting to kind of bolt, so I'll rip this out pretty soon, but that was just to keep it looking entertaining for the spring. Over here, I have some peppers in just my classic um, bags. Now, the reason why this is so empty is because I am going to mulch this with straw, and I'm going to do like a good five inches, and I like to do that with these... Um, cloth pots because I find that they do dry out really really quickly. This is where we're at for the front garden. I'm honestly quite shocked with this. It's doing really good. So I have cucumbers here. These are like an Asian uh, cucumber variety. I'm really excited for them. I think they're like a long, they almost look like a hybrid between a, a pickling cucumber and a long English and I'm going to trellis them up this. And then these are all tomatoes I started um, from seed. I have a random sunflower that's really starting to take off. Lots of marigolds. I'm actually gonna do a video on marigolds because it's a common misconception that they like, do everything. So they, um, it's an uncommon for people to say like, oh, they deter rabbits and they you know, help get rid of pests. And a lot of that is just fake, it's fake news. Um, but I'm gonna do a video on that. The science behind why marigolds work in some scenarios, but not all. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a video on that one, but I intercrop them only because I think they're pretty. I genuinely enjoy 
their presence and their smell. And just overall, I find them to be a very pretty flower. So inside of here, I have garlic on one half and I have onions on the other. Once this garlic comes out, lettuce is going to take its place because garlic won't last forever. And then on the front here, I have kohlrabi and cabbage. I'm gonna try to use BTK. I'm gonna try to use BTK and hand um, picking worms on this this year in cabbage moth just to see if I can do it um, give you guys different methods in which you can prevent the cabbage moths and that sort of thing and then over here I have more of a classic cabbage moth uh, slash worm protection which is like the actual bug netting and this is all brass case through here because they have really bad flea beetles combined because it's a drought year and they're always bad this time of year but um, yeah they're starting to actually head out which is really really nice Hopefully they don't bolt with this heat. That would be really unfortunate. You could also use shade cloth in this scenario if you wanted to. Like a 40% would work really, really nicely. Over here, I have kale, I have lavender, and then I have my lettuce starts. I do starts, not seeds. I have my beets that I started from seeds. These actually need to be thinned here, likely this weekend, if not sooner. When I thin, I actually just pull them out and then re-transplant them over on this side. So just a hack on not how to not waste seedlings. Over here I have more pumpkin space. I only got two pumpkins in this bed. I'm hoping that it'll actually take over onto the lawn. These cotyledons are dying back completely normal, by the way. Don't uh, stress out about this at all. That yellowing is completely within reason. And yeah, on the sides here, I have celery <laughs> just randomly planted. In this section, I have runner beans. So this whole thing, is going to be runner beans. These are actually LED lights. I think it's gonna look really pretty when it's done. But these I started um, in seed cells and then transplanted. Runner beans are one where you could actually direct sow. They just germinate a little bit faster under heat, which is what I did here because I was late at actually starting them. Inside of here, I have broccoli. As you can see, it's like really, really taking off. And then I have some really unique radishes over on this side and I have celery on the front. Now you're probably wondering, Ashley, why do you have a net over radishes and celery and broccoli? That's another one that I've had a lot of bug issues with. So the radishes and the broccoli got hit with flea beetles in the beginning of the year. I did a whole video on that. They will get worms. The broccoli in particular will get worms eventually. And the celery last year, I had a really bad aphid issue. So if the aphids come back, I'm grabbing ladybugs. I'm going to stick them inside of the bug net with the celery and hopefully get some celery throughout the entire year. Because last year I was completely skunked when it came to celery. And actually, I actually did a video saying I was never going to plant celery again. And I don't, I didn't want to, but I want to because I want homegrown celery. So so we're gonna try it again, but I, I'm not super confident. The aphids literally attacked it last year, so we'll see. Over in this section, I have more cabbage, more onions that I very clearly transplanted out earlier than the other ones, more cabbage, more celery. I have tomatoes in here, more tomatoes, and then some flowers in the back. But yeah, that's overall what we're looking at for my garden. Um, you'll notice I got a lot of brassicas in the city this year, a lot of tomatoes in this year, uh, like I always do. I go through a lot of tomatoes, tomato sauce, salsas, uh, fresh tomato eats, you name it. I go through a moderately uh, good amount of lettuce. We always grow lettuce, whether it's indoor, hydroponically, downstairs, or outside. So the lettuce is kind of the normal amount for me. The cabbage I am going overboard this year. I wanna do a big batch of um, sauerkraut. I want to be able to freeze some cabbage and cabbage in general storage for a really long time. Last year I had a really poor cabbage harvest and I want more greens into the winter. I've discovered um, and I've been craving this winter because we didn't you know have that. I mean of course I got some from the grocery store. I didn't suffer through it but it's just it's different when it's homegrown so that's kind of really my main focus for this year. Out on the farm, I'll do a separate tour, but I am doing my classic root vegetables, potatoes, um, and corn out there because that's where they do best. But I wanna thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and let me know where your garden is at, what zone you're in, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.